Alright. Guess this thing is working. Remember to guard your privacy. Hello, Noki. Hi, Alexander. I want to finish this thing today. I hope. We'll see. Did you see my suggestion on that? I think so. What You wanted a menu for something? Uh, I don't remember exactly what it is. It's like another version of the properties pop up, I think, right? I seen up. Warning everywhere. Needs to go ortho. Oh, actually, that didn't need to be ortho. I could just. Oh well. Viewport display tools of objects. What is a tool of objects? Oh, hey, Cora. Good morning. Wait, it's not. Is it morning for you guys? What time is it in New Zealand right now? slot glossy oh, maybe it'll be white okay, copy this one make it white and less metal okay ADM nice Oh wow, not too far off from from LA over here. Hello, Dandatron. <laughs> Thank you. Did you see the movie yet? Yeah, I'm still pretty pretty excited about that whole thing. I I've, I've never seen this kind of a reaction to a to something I've worked on yet. So it's been it's been fun. Mm 
Maybe like that. Like this. This can go like that. Oh, I just I love that you can adjust this stuff. So easy. Duped into watching Aquaman. I heard Aquaman was good. <laughs> Although the po the poster was pretty funny, but I don't know. You never know these things, I guess. I need some more guts here. Some tasty guts in here. Yes, here we go. Some made up guts. Oh, they're on this side. Alright, I'll grab all these guys. Shift A, small. Here. Double click. Do, 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 do. And let's extrude. Oh. And it's uh, eight side. This is, this is so tiny. So tiny. This goes like that. This goes like this. And I think we need some more. Okay. How about over here? Double the cutage. Like that? No, it doesn't like that. Um, okay, how about like if we. Hmm. Here, I'll hit P to separate. cuts separate cuts here get this thing running come on there we go right here hey toto welcome welcome i wonder why this this come on all right there we go now it works Um, hmm, well, I, I saw your thread, I just, uh, yeah, that, that stuff is all possible, actually, you, you should probably try to do it yourself, man, <laughs> um, just go into the code and start to fiddle with it, um, basically, all you gotta do is whatever setting you, you want, here, I'll show you, teach, Teach Anoki how to fish, and then he won't have to ask you for menus anymore. So what is it that that you wanted again? Let me see. Well, here, I'll go there. Let's see. Dev talk. What does Noki want? Let's give Noki what he wants. What is it? Pop up for the viewport display. Okay. So all we got to do is look for viewport display, right click on it, 
edit source okay so right click edit source that's the secret because now it's open in here and this right here it's highlighted already this is what we need viewport display and then we've got the name the axis and we got show wireframe show edges show texture space blah 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 okay so now we could say say you want show wire so now you go you grab my little properties pop up this is you know the the one that's included that's part of the scripts and now let's say we want to put it over here somewhere under mesh properties let's say and we can just put it right here let me just change this to OB so it matches here because this is what we're using OB OB show wire text wireframe well I'll call this blah blah just so we know this is the one that we're doing right here so now I go back and save this let's go and save this go back here and this one is saved too right yes this is saved and now there it is wireframe let's see if this works Wait, it is working. Add the wire wireframe over solid drawing. What the hell? Oh, you only see it in the other in the other views apparently. Not in the rendered view. Oh wait. Now we see it. I'm confused. Oh, all edges. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, there we go. All edges. So you could put both of these in there. Again, you just right click on it, edit source, then you copy whatever's here. Show all edges, blah, blah, blah. Make sure this OBJ is referring to context.object. So right here we have it as OB, so I'll just call it OB. Okay, I hope that helps. You can make your own menus now and stop bothering me. Just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, make your make as many menus as you want now <laughs> um, I'm a grumpy grumpy bastard uh, okay let's see why what is this how come there's two of them here um, boop, 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 boop. What, what am I doing? Here we go. First one, which graphic tablet do you recommend? I have a small Intuos Pro Wacom. I like the smaller ones because they, uh, they're more portable. How big is this one? It's like 7 by 5 inches or something? No, like, it's the... Wait, is this the medium? I don't know. It's not huge. I don't. I want it to be like the size of a small sketchbook. And uh, yeah, I, I say the size is important. I don't. I don't want one that's too big. Hey Igor, thanks for the kind words. Um, yeah, glad you liked it. I, I saw it too for the first time this weekend. It's pretty pretty exciting. <laughs> Uh, could you explain how you change the way you do your 3D modeling if it's for 3D printing? Yeah, 3D printing is actually pretty pretty easy with Blender. So let's say we wanted to print this part here. All we got to do is let me first save this. All you would really have to do is apply all the booleans, but not really because actually you don't even have to apply the booleans. You could just go file export STL and then selection and it already applies the modifiers for you right here 
So now you just export this to somewhere. I'll just put it here. And oh, thank you, Igor. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. And then let me see. And now we just open it. Uh, well, maybe, maybe maybe I'll make a new scene here just to check it. You just got to make sure there's no holes in it. So let's open up our export, import, STL. Where did it go? Here it is. Okay. So this part looks like it will not print because there's holes, right? Like uh, these gaping holes right here. So all you got to do is pick it, F to fill it. Same thing here, F to fill it. If you want to control this, oops. Well, there's also a bit of a issue here because these two are separate, right? But you could just make these overlap. So you could just go like that so they overlap a little bit. And then that should be printable. If you want to be extra, you know, sure, you could just go Control V, Add. And that'll just combine these two. So now they're one, one piece. And then over here, this is all filled. And the way you can tell if something has no holes is you just double click it, press F. If you say could not create merge face, then that means it's it's full. Like for here, if we double click this and press F, it says, well, it fills the face. And now we're all done. And if I press F again, it says no, which is actually good. And then maybe you could say, you know, connect here to here, J. And maybe here to here, J. Oops. And now this piece will print. This is done. This piece will also print. If you press F, it says good numbers. This piece, no, because it's uh oh wait, actually, yes, this is this is solid here. This piece will not print, so you can just thicken it. Now it's gonna print. This piece, same thing. Thicken it, now it's gonna print. Okay, all done. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. We're going to look at some more stuff today. Law 34. I have a, a bit, a little bit of a dump to show. <laughs> Actually, I should probably show it soon before. Um, I don't know. You guys want to see it sooner or later? <laughs> oh. I think this goes here. And there's some color down here. So this decal is pretty easy, I think. I think I can just do it. Um, do it with a plane, probably. Make it round. And okay, let's make a new slot and do glow. Whoa, maybe a pink. Actually, is that a glow? Maybe it's not a glow. I'm not sure if that's a glow. It could be just uh, I'll leave it as a glow for now, but more red. And maybe less strength. More, even more red. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 
Actually, we should look at some Spider-Man stuff now, because there's been, over the past uh, weekend, a lot of the artists have started posting um, some some of their concept art, including myself, so I think it's, a, it's pretty fun to look at everybody's work. So, here we go. Here's some of my stuff here. And uh, a lot of the stuff that we did was like uh, at this stage it was so, sort of before some of the story was locked down so we were trying to figure out like just a lot of establishing shots and just the feeling of Brooklyn and the world and what it what it would be like and then there were a few sets that were more or less locked down in the story so this was um, Uncle Aaron's apartment with his crazy couch and this was based off of a this weird red material is like based off of one of the sony couches although it wasn't this pleated and cool looking it was like a very plain chair thing and then also this is all his audio equipment i said i think i mentioned this in the last stream but um a lot of this stuff was i kind of got inspired by my my uncle who was a electrical engineer and he would build his own uh, he was really into audio stuff too and he would build his own amplifiers and stuff so I tried to make some of these look like they were homemade by uh, an ele electrical engineer which Uncle Aaron is supposed to be um, so yeah he's he's a he's a he's a nerdy guy he's an engineer he's got his vacuum tubes he's got his record player his his um giant speakers and oscilloscopes and blah 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 and then uh yuki demers actually took this set to its final state which is you would see on on screen um and i think the layout of the room changed a lot and he he ends up having like this whole workout like punching bag area um and the apartment looks really cool in the movie and pretty different but they did keep the couch and a lot of the speaker stuff and and some of the feeling of the lighting so that was cool um oh yeah let me send you guys a link here so here's a drawing one of those very elusive things that you don't see too much in concept art but <laughs> I um yeah this is a fun quick little drawing and you know, Alberto Mielgo, our art director at the time, wanted to make him like a jazz enthusiast, so we got Blue Note poster up there, and uh, his little hairpin, hairpin legs. And then this is the Collider, um, which was uh, uh, a main set in the movie. Th this is this version didn't make it into the movie, but. This was just uh, my take on it early on. We wanted to have lots and lots of color, lots of like cooling pipes and just really colorful, juicy, thick pipes that, you know, the people are going to run, you know, the, the spider characters run across and like have fights running all over this thing. But anyway, um, yeah, and then there were these two observation, observation rooms that... Uh, they also changed for the movie, but it was fun to try to figure those out. This was a little mini animation test we put together to show what this could look like. Let me let me turn on some sound here. Let me know if this is too loud. I hope it doesn't blow out your ears here. A, a little tiny video. Alberto put together the uh, a lot of the blurs and the After Effects glows on that one. 
and uh, yeah there was a lot of work in there <laughs> but I think uh, they ended up changing it to another version but anyway it was it was a fun thing to work on this was uh, some concepts for SPDR which is Penny Penny Parker the anime spider girls um, mech robot and uh, yeah these were really fun the, the comic version is sort of a ripoff of Ev Evangelion and then mine was like sort of a ripoff of the comic version mixed with I don't know some more modern uh, aesthetics to it and also I wanted to get like some spider more spiderness into it so I tried to get the spider legs and a bunch of eyeballs in there and we also played with what if what, what if the mech suit was really small like just more of a little bodysuit thing and then she would be you know just super fast and agile and there was also these really big versions really tall and lanky ones this, this one was huge I think um, a lot of these were were too big for and causing a lot of problems for story because you know all these characters are sort of hanging out in Aunt May's house and it's like too big you can't have this giant robot just sitting in the living room so um, yeah but anyway it was fun and I tried to do like a couple spider versions this one kind of looks like Crabbot, I guess, but... And then uh, this was my final model for the... My uh, my version of SPDR, and we wanted to have a lot of... Or I guess Alberto wanted to have a lot of uh, wires and cables hanging out, so when, when they were fighting and moving, the, the wires would be j jiggling around everywhere. That would have been cool. It might, might have looked like uh, web-ish, maybe. And then this was Alberto's um, concept for Penny Parker. And when, when we were doing the characters and, and the, the style, I think it was a little bit more of a like age up style. Like the, it was a little bit less cartoony and a bit more uh, realistic in nature, but still very stylized and very graphic and flat. And we had these lines over everything. Um, yeah. And then this was uh, um, Aunt May's lab, or, you know, photo lab. Um, they, they went with a completely different version in the movie, but this was also pretty fun to work on. Wanted to be, this was like, supposed to be based on a bomb shelter. So like a 50s bomb shelter underneath the house, maybe, but a little bit bigger. And uh, so a bit of a more realistic version of, of the spider basement. And then um, this was one of the observation rooms for the collider in the, in the lab. And we did a bunch of versions of this one, but yeah, they went they went with a different version for there. <laughs> I I, th I think you're noticing a pattern here that um, most of the stuff doesn't make it through. This thing made it through. I was pretty happy with this um, Prowler's motorcycle. Although we we get little glimpses of it, we see it like turning on. We see little corners of it, and we see. Um, very short little quick cuts of this thing <laughs> before it gets totally demolished but that was a pretty fun one and then this is some of the vehicles um, early on when we were thinking of having Man uh, Manhattan be or I guess Brooklyn be more you know like old school New York to get um, a lot of these lines like all the hand-drawn lines from the 
that, that we had on the characters. Oh, we, um, Alberto, the art director, was like, okay, we got to make the cars look like that too. So I started like just drawing little geometry lines all over the place. These were actually mostly... Actually, no, this version was done with the drawing. So I took the, the drawing I did and projected it on top of geometry and offset it a little bit to get this working. And I also did drawings for the hubcaps, for the headlights, and basically everywhere around the car, just drawing in reflections and drawing in shadows and door cuts and handles and everything. And then this was, um, <laughs> we had, uh, I don't know if this is a, is a spoiler, so I guess close your ears if you don't want to hear spoilers. Um, but we had another version of uh, Doc Ock who had this really cool surfer van. Actually, that's not really a spoiler because it's not in the movie. <laughs> And then um, and this was a test done in Blender, actually, because I started using Blender on this, on this job for the first time because I wanted to do some renderings of interiors, like, uh, like this collider stuff up here was rendered in Blender in cycles um, using GPU because uh, this, this scene in particular was giving me a lot of trouble rendering in, in Moto because it... Uh, it was just too slow. So I ended up switching to importing everything. This was modeled in Moto and then brought over to Blender for rendering. Then I ended up using Blender more and more throughout the production until I was like, okay, I'm just building out full scenes. And Well, this isn't really a full scene, but it was a test done in Blender of um, just mixing painting with, with 3D. So, you know, most of this stuff here, I mean, it's all painting plus a tiny bit of geometry and just just as a test of like what does a 3D painting look like and then this was an idea for Miles's glow suit he was gonna have like a nighttime glowing bodysuit uh, and then this was some of the vehicles this was the um, USB truck actually I think I well yeah Alberto was like, yeah, we need um, we need some of those delivery trucks, you know, like, uh, well, let me preface this by saying that he's he's not um, from America, so like some of the brand names and stuff, he he doesn't really know all too well. So he's like, yeah, you know, you know, like the USB truck, <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, the USB truck. So that's that was fun. Got to do a lot of just traffic vehicles. I think pretty much all these vehicles made it through to the movie and they're they're just populating the streets of Manhattan and we we tried to warp things around and make them look more like the paintings and again lines everywhere thick black uh, lines and we tried to make them disappear and reappear at certain points using um, just one-sided geometry. The, this, is, this is just sub D here, nothing fancy, just sub D lines. A lot of the cars were not even fully sub D, like they're just regular polys. And then this stuff is all geometry too. It's like emission geometry and not too much reflection in here actually. It's, it's mostly cards. And same thing in here, I tried to like stylize the reflections. So you're not I'm not building out all the, like, the proper way that you would normally build out these these uh, reflector buckets. I'm trying to do, like, an abstract and simpler version of it. So they look, they just look simpler. They, and they look more stylized, I guess. Oops. What the hell? Come on. Come on. Same thing with the headlights, you know, you can kind of see it here, it's all just like blocky 
geometry in there. And then a warped, warped version. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how the, the taillights came out. Like just putting in the pure colors. Like these are just pure emission colors. No shaders or no special cell shading or anything going on. It's just manual. It's kind of like painting with color here. And then painting it like instead of using a gray diffuse material down here, I'm just saying like, okay, this is an emiss emissive gray at that value so it's not going to receive any lighting or shadows it's just going to be flat and consistent same thing here 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 so a lot of you know the shiny parts are all just regular shiny glossy materials but then a lot of the other parts like this and this and this and this are flat which gives it a nice mixture of realistic and also graphic and stylized so i thought that was a cool way to 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 achieve it also in the interior we're just like putting in black pure black materials and, and also on the shadows um, we were trying to figure out a way to like quantize the lighting on the shadows but in this case I just like put in a black uh, plane but I think they in the movie they might I mean they're they're using more advanced lighting and they're not I don't think they use these black cards in the movie but they do keep the lines though I think all these lines are in the movie and I, and I believe they use these mo these exact models so that was kind of cool to see and we're just warping with lattice and then a lot of box trucks and they always have graffiti on them in New York so and same technique here just a lot of geometry in the lights and cards and painting and drawing and Flat, 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 flat. <laughs> All of this flat, 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 flat. This is like kind of it's it's sort of like painting with your your polygons a little bit. And here's the bus again. Real house plants of New York City. Based off of uh, one of Alberto's paintings. The Red X truck. Pretty happy with how that came out too. I love the. I mean, these trucks are such a cool design anyway. I just I love how these things look. And here's the USB truck. And I tried to get get some wonkiness in the in some of the headlight shapes too and bumper and just also trying to warp some of the side side of the van to make it a little bit let me see if I can see it here oh I guess you can't really see this maybe this is the wrong version but we try I tried to get some warping happening in the panels uh, it's kind of hard to see like yeah Oh, and then here's the sketches from for the trucks. And I think I just use the same graffiti and uh, as a texture. And uh, oh, this was a more you know, vintage version of the bus, and then, like more modern bus here. And tried to get the windows to do that cool like bulging effect where they it just warps everywhere we were trying to get warping everywhere <laughs> i guess and then we had some more traffic cars but i don't think any of these got got made into the movie um vintage yeah, here's the first sketch for the van kingpin's limo i don't think this ever happened Red X. and here's a taxi so this taxi I used a lot of the drawings or the the lines here and just basically projected them onto a, an, another copy of the car model 
and just scaled it up a little bit so the lines was, were sitting on top of the the 3D model. Excuse me. And then here we're just testing out what the lights look like on or off and trying to keep it, make sure that it reads graphically both ways. And it, and it was really fun to make these little lines just jumping off the car a little bit and floating. And also tried to make them look sort of like calligraphy, like thick and thin, thick and thin everywhere. Sort of like how the paintings were. And of course, like all the crazy paintings, we're gonna look at some some other some of the paintings from some of the other artists in a second. And then this is Prowler's motorcycle. I also did um, some work on the on Prowler's gloves, like his power gloves and his boots, um, based off of um, Jesus Alonso Iglesias design, and also Alberto's design. So. Jesus was a character designer for a, for a lot of um, stuff. Or I mean, he was the character designer while I was on it, and eventually Shiyun came on, came on after afterwards. But Jesus is amazing. Also, we should check out his work too. Um, okay, let's see. Let's see. Any questions? How long were you on the project for? Um, I was working there for a bit over a year, I think, at Sony. If these were done in Blender, how did the materials in PBR get such passed to other departments that use this as ref? Well, we would just, ex I mean, I would export it as, as FBX and give it to um, the production side. And then they would have to basically rebuild all the, you know, re recreate the materials that I had. But I would, you know, record little videos with notes on how to set up the emission and the diffuse and everything like to get that graphic look and then uh, on their side everything is Maya so yeah for production I don't think anybody was using Blender in production but at least for VizDev and concept art we can pretty much use whatever whatever programs you need to use and they don't really care um, are, the, are the outlines on the cars exaggerated for this demo at all? Yeah, they, they were exaggerated. Would love to see something like this in Blender. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, this is Blender stuff. The USB truck. All the detail are modeled. Yes, they. it's all modeled. No, no more normal maps. No bump maps. Everything in there was just regular modeling all right cool so let's look at let's look at um yun ling first he is this amazing artist uh, video game guy mostly but we managed to lure him over to the spider-man project and i was so happy and he was like, yo, there's not that many lings around. So that was cool. And so we were, he, he was working in, uh, I think, where is he? Toronto. He's in Canada somewhere. Really cold. And so he's always posting pictures of snow. But dude, look at this stuff. And, and we would just stare at his fences all day. Well, these these paintings are really really high res, in reality, so that like you could zoom in and each little fence post had some interesting little texture or detail on it. And man, he just nailed this style right away. Um, his fences, man, I've never been this aroused by a fence. It's, it's amazing, <laughs> and his. And like these railings too. Just can't get enough of that stuff. And then the way he does metal too is just crazy. Very, very abstract and simple. But feels real. Like all of this feels so grounded somehow. Um... 
And then this was the police station, which got super detailed. I think all this stuff is crazy. It's like so much patience to to do this kind of work. It's not not that many people in the world can do this. I think. Um, yeah, it's crazy. He's crazy. I don't know. You gotta be a little bit messed up in the head to do this. This is... Wow. And then, and then you, and on top of that, you have to do all the little posters and graphics and text and flyers. <laughs> Um, who's that? <laughs> oh, love these paintings so much. Yeah. So definitely check out Yun's stuff. I don't, oh, I never saw this. What part is this? Um, This made it into the movie. This was our, um, in a, this was gonna be our first little test or proof of concept, you know, having Spider-Man in here looking at himself in the mirror. And this seems like a version of this test scene made it into the movie. That was, and then I don't know what this, uh, I don't remember them going to the hospital. Yeah. So check out Yun's stuff. And who else we got on here? We've got... Um, I think Neil Ross just posted some stuff. Oh, I don't know how to spell. Is it on here? No. Where'd he put it? Maybe he put it on... Is it on Instagram? Us. Oh, there's Alberto. Where'd he put it? Damn it. Anyway. It'll probably pop up somewhere eventually, but this guy is an uh, absolute master of painting. And he was like big inspiration for everybody on the team. Because um, he's, he's not, he's like sort of in between a concept artist and viz dev and fine artist, you know, like he, his stuff kind of looks like it could be in a museum sometimes, you know? He is one of my favorites. Well, anyway, let's look at some of some of his other stuff anyway. And he's also a master of abstract stuff. So when you zoom into his stuff, it's like really... It, it's you kind of feel like you've been fooled because you zoom in and you see that it's just a bunch of random shapes but then when you zoom out you're it's a totally different story so it's really cool how he sort of tricks you he's like a magician or something he tricks you he like makes you see things that aren't there somehow Um, and his Spider-Man work was not quite this abstract, but it still got pretty crazy. Like, he would, in the, in the backgrounds, like, really big city, cityscapes you would see in the back, it's like, just squares and triangles, trapezoids. <laughs> it, but then when you zoom out, it looks like, oh man, I gotta find some of that stuff. Let me see. Neil Ross Facebook. Oh, 
Oh shoot, you guys got the links there? Sorry that I can't... I don't know... I can't get links to show up on Facebook for some reason. Ugh, God damn it. Well, whatever. We'll circle back to that, hopefully. Or if... Uh, man. Alright, let's look at Rob Rupel. Where's Rob? Here's Rob. So Rob is another giant of animation and uh, concept art. He was, I'm sure you know his work probably, um, he's worked on a ton of really big projects and movies, video games. He was an art director at Naughty Dog for a while. And he came over to Sony straight from Naughty Dog just to work on this project. And it was pretty cool. He, he I mean, he's got this like, also a really different sense from most concept artists. And, and he also, I think, leans more to the fine art side of things versus a lot of um, animation people. And, he, and he's, he's really into, like, you know, he knows all the contemporary artists. Like, we would go to the Arcadia Gallery in Culver City during lunch, and he, he knows everything that's going on in the, in the fine art world. And you can see, like, in his work that he's... He has that sense. He he's, you know, he has that taste. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, and he had some of these. He got to do some of these really huge um, vistas and city scenes. And he's he's also really big into abstraction and graphicalizing stuff. And just getting really uh, lost in these giant paintings. Oh yeah, Doc Ox Lab. Man, there were so many paintings of Doc Ox Lab that were amazing. And um, yeah, Rob had some really, really cool versions. Neil had some crazy versions. Even Mike Winkleman, um, Beeple, aka Beeple, had some really cool Doc Ox Labs. He has he, Rob's look like um, very fifties and like fifties animation, almost. Well, yeah, it's very mid-century stuff. Very New York. Pink Bank. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I kind of wish more of these shots ended up in the movie, but I understand that it is. It maybe it would be too slow to be just, like, looking at the tops of buildings for too long, but, yeah, really awesome stuff. Ooh, it's a beautiful Chrysler building. Man, I never saw some of these. Oh, I remember this one. Yeah, I like the muddy street. Epic, epic, epic stuff. Oh, yeah. I remember this one. We were all, like, looking at this and, like, man, so much detail. All the little bricks and stuff. How do you do all that? And then he's like, oh, don't worry. I just mirrored it. <laughs> it's no big deal. We're like, oh, okay, right. And then, uh, yeah, a lot of these scenes, man. I never saw this one. Or this one, actually. I think this might have been 
when the style changed a little bit, maybe? I'm not, I'm not sure. There was a, a switch to a new production designer and new art directors, and so the style did change from from some of this more earlier, um, I guess, Alberto era work. This was um, during Alberto's time here. So, so yeah, these are like a little bit more realistic, a little bit more detailed, and just, yeah, just a more more information packed into these ones. And then I guess some of the later ones are a bit more animation style and like more simplified and more just um, a little bit more cartoony, I would say. school I love this one we were trying to figure out how to get these to be 3d for the longest time trying to like make it into a 3d test and I guess this is a uh, Rob's notes on how to make this into a 3d model and how to treat the materials and stuff and we were like really struggling on this but it seems like they they did a good job on it and I guess he he got to do a lot of color stuff too. I think this is back when they wanted uh, Forrest Forrest Whitaker to be the dad, so we had some character designs that looked like Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, there's uh, Uncle Aaron's apartment. Man, Rob did so much work, Jesus. Oh man, that's really cool. I love that pose. <laughs> Spoilers. Oh, that's really cool. I like these people. And the, all, the, all the groups of people just simplify into a square shadow. That's really cool. Hey, it's SPDR. With the lanky legs. I don't know which version that is. Kingpin. I, yeah, Kingpin is the coolest design ever. Jesus and Xiyun did an amazing job with, with Kingpin. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then trying to figure out how to get the models models to work. That was that's so difficult to try to it's actually like more work than trying to do a photo reel jacket. Cause you have to like think about how you're gonna simplify it and make it work, um without the use of, you know, all your normal modeling techniques. Yeah, beautiful. All right. And then, uh, let's see. Who's next? Who's next? Um, Peter Chan. Oh, I don't think he's posted anything yet. Peter Chan is like a huge part a huge painter on this project um, if you guys don't know Peter Chan he's uh, amazing you probably do you probably know Peter one, one, of, one of I guess everybody's favorite painter right now <laughs> one of the top top guys and he's doing this crazy new thing lately Looks really funky. <laughs> um, that's his dog. Monty. Oh, come on. But yeah, he... He kicked so much ass, and, and his colors are just really different. You can always tell 
when it's his painting because the colors are like jumping around like crazy they're they're doing really weird things i have a feeling that he's he's like colorblind or something because his greens and his oranges and his yellows are always like jumping around and just like going nuts and it's really really fun to look at um like this kind of thing crazy yeah peter chan so hopefully he'll post some of his work on the movie soon but in the meantime just just look at his his work it's insane he's um does a lot of these street scenes too so he was like perfect for the movie um i mean he he's really good at all the the urban scenes and all the little details the thing about all these paintings that in the movie is that they're really really simplified but they're also ultra complex because there's just so much information on the on the page it's almost that you have to simplify it otherwise you'll be painting you'll be sitting there painting for like years unless you unless you try to simplify it oh so cool all right and then we've got um uh, Warden Light, so that's, uh, let's see, Art Station. These two guys are a husband and wife team in France. And, uh, wow, they posted a lot of stuff here. <laughs> so, Warden Light. They did some really good stuff. And actually, I think, I feel like they grew the most throughout this project. Because when they started here, they were doing a completely different style. They were doing like photo bash, um, everything. Like they were trying to do like photo reel with photo textures everywhere. And like Hollywood lighting with explosions and helicopters and things like that. And by the end of it, though, they completely embraced this ultra flat, ultra graphic, ultra painterly style. And it was really cool to see them like go through that process and and just morph. It was awesome. So hopefully in the future, they'll be able to do more more painterly style projects because I think they enjoyed it a lot it seemed like they were really hyped and each painting got more and more graphic it was really cool like they kept pushing the abstractions I like how they do the, the glass and the, the metal and stuff. Well, and you can see, like, this is one of the earlier paintings. And, and you can sort of see some photos in here. Some photo textures and, and sort of, like, smudged around. And some things are more, like... I don't know. It's more... It feels more photo-y. But then in, in the later works, and this one also is a little bit more photo-y, in the late, some of the later paintings, they get way more graphic. Yeah, this is some of the earlier stuff too. It's like all photos um, and explosions and stuff. Where is it? But yeah, let's go back to the the later ones, like this one here. Very, very graphic, very different from the earlier stuff. And this one too. 
Like they're simplifying the trees a lot more, they're making these silhouettes. They're putting in strokes and leaving them alone, not smudging things. I think it's a lot more a lot more confident in these later paintings. It's this one is really cool too. I love how subtle all the all the shades, the values are in here and then it's like flipping flipping over to light to dark, dark to light. Yeah. Yeah, so this whole movie was, I think, all about the paintings. Like, the paintings were just so fresh so and so different. And all these people were, like, bringing their own flavor to it. Pretty fun to watch. And then who else was there? We had, uh, Craig Mullins had some stuff on this. But I don't know if he's posted yet. He's, he's a pretty, um quiet guy it seems like so he might not might not have posted yet we got Zach Retz let's see Zach Does, has Zach posted anything yet oh here we go cool I guess this is a little tri little uh, tribute <laughs> He's doing fan art for his own movie. Guess I might as well go on Facebook. Zach Kretz. Let's see. All right, here's some 3D block out for the train. Use that. Oh man, and then this is oh yeah, we gotta look at his house also. Sorry guys, this is a <laughs> this is a rabbit hole here. His um uh one of Alberto's uh friends who he brought on to do characters in the beginning. Comic book guy, just insane lines. Everything looked like calligraphy all the time, just thick and thin everywhere and just like hitting those perfect lines I don't know how you do that like every line is just really really energetic and lively how <laughs> so this is Uncle Aaron <laughs> oh man. Now let's look at Zach. Oh, here's Zach at signing some art books. And here's Florent. I didn't get to work with Florent, but looks like cool stuff. Oh, more Jesus Kingpin stuff. He'll probably, I guess he'll probably be posting more stuff soon, but he, he put up a couple uh, samples. And he, he likes to go like really, really abstract with stuff. He'll, he'll, like this train gets lost right here, which is cool. And he just, he's really confident with his, just, he just puts stuff down like colors and textures and splashes and lines and then somehow it makes it work and I, I really like all his graffiti stuff too oh. yeah really cool I, I hope we'll, he'll put up some more stuff soon and then uh Oh yeah, these are some pretty cool characters from Brittany. I didn't get to 
work with her either. Oh yeah, let's look at Neil. There we go. Oh my god. Some stuff from Neil. He had this version of Doc Ock's lab that was just a really, really long overhanging rectangle. It just like extended straight into the mist and just disappeared in in the redwood forest. It was that's the one that stuck with everybody, and you see that version of it like popping up everywhere in everybody else's paintings. Yeah, kind of like that ex machina style. Very designery, minimal. <laughs> Dwell magazine. And how cool is this collider? It's like, man, it's made out of gee, just straight geometry. Neil's a really big um, architecture fan. You can kind of see that in his work. And when he when he came to visit Sony um, from London, he we went on a little architecture field trip, and he was just like taking photos of all this weird. It was like these weird parking structures and staircases that led to nowhere and iron court court and steel towers nearby work in some weird industrial park and somehow he just knew that it existed and it was like this weird architecture project park that had buildings that didn't look like they would work <laughs> and he just beelined straight to them and took some photos Oh man, he has so many crazy paintings of of uh, Manhattan and Brooklyn. I hope I hope he'll uh, put some more up soon. Okay, and who else? We got Yuki. Demers. So I didn't get to work with Yuki, but um, he ended up doing a lot of the final work on on the sets. So I, I got to meet him afterwards, uh, and uh, yeah, so he he ended up finishing up Aaron, Uncle Aaron's apartment, and yeah, it was really really cool to see to see this set on screen finally, and uh, yeah, team effort, pretty cool, and then there was this whole like boxing area too and I like all the pans and stuff he also he also did the final version of of Miles's bedroom here which is based off of uh, one of Alberto's paintings and I really like his addition of the rice cooker here <laughs> uh, makes sense for a dorm room although this is a pretty expensive rice cooker the zorishis are, are not cheap okay i think this might be it i know i'm probably forgetting because there's there's so many artists that worked on this oh yeah well mike winkleman worked on it but or aka people but i don't think he's put up any work yet Let's see, Alberto. Alberto hasn't put up any work yet. I really hope he does at some point. Because he kind of... Alberto was the guy that everybody was trying to emulate, I guess. And we, we were all being absorbed into his style I, and uh, following his lead. So it would be really good if, if he posts some work at some point. Um, and then who else was there? 
Jeez, uh, my brain sucks. I have a doo doo brain. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I talked a lot. If I if I miss some, I'll probably show them on the next stream. But anyway, you guys are probably sick and tired of seeing Spider-Man stuff by now. It's been <laughs> a bit obnoxious, probably. But anyway, thank you so much for joining in again. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the movie if you, if you go see it. And uh, yeah, good times. Anyway, I'll see you uh, tomorrow, I think same time I'll try to do a little bit more work and less talking and uh, okay see you later <laughs>